I mean, Andrew Tate explains it well. It's status. Yeah. Status. Imagine like uh, J uh, me and John John fighting like after the Tyson Fury fight, exactly. the one or the second one, mm -hmm. you just get that fight bigger. Hey everyone, welcome back to Inside the Cage, where we bring you the latest and exciting updates of UFC. First, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Darren Till shares thoughts on Dana White privilege for UFC champ Sean O'Malley. Recently, Darren Till has shared his opinion on the whole Dana White privilege situation involving UFC champion Sean O'Malley. Just last Saturday, at UFC 292, O'Malley managed to secure a victory over Aljamain Sterling via TKO, earning himself the bantamweight championship. Surprisingly, it's quite an achievement considering he's got a record of 17, one in his MMA career. In a while, O'Malley's rise to fame and success has raised some eyebrows. Here, some people suggested that he might be benefiting from what they're calling Dana White privilege. Favoritism, for sure. But hold on a second, Darren Till isn't buying into that narrative. He take his thoughts on Twitter. Everyone is upset about this so-called Dana White privilege. You either bring the numbers in or don't. Guess what's going to happen when you do? The UFC is going to push you more. It's business. It's not friendship. So keep crying all you little lick-ass trolls and lick-ass fighters. Bums the lot of yous. So am I F it. Moreover, Darren had quite the journey during his eight years with the promotion before he was released earlier this year. The gorilla, as he's known, had his share of ups and downs inside the cage. Now the question is whether we agree with Till's perspective on Sean O'Malley or not. In the MMA world, fighters often have complex paths to success, and this situation is a mix of factors that contribute to where they end up in their careers. O'Malley responds with humor to Andrew Tate's one-way open relationship statement. Nowadays, Sean O'Malley is riding high on his recent success. Can you believe it? At just 28 years old, he went out there and proved himself by landing a brutal TKO against Aljamain Sterling at UFC 292. Impressive, right? Now, with that victory under his belt, O'Malley has opened the door to some serious opportunities. Here, I'm talking about some substantial cash coming his way from his UFC career. And it's not just about those championship-level paydays, although those are no joke. However, he's got his eyes on potentially raking in the dough from PPV points, snagging some lucrative sponsorship deals, and even working out some side agreements. Man, it's a whole package deal. In a recent interview on Bradley Martin's Raw Talk podcast, O'Malley let some personal insights fly, especially as he headed into UFC 292. And what's the highlight? Well, it turns out that he's in an open relationship with his partner. Yeah, that's quite the reveal. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that if, if, if I was in the opposite position. If I wasn't paying for everything, if I wasn't, you know, if I wasn't successful in, in any sort of way and I was just like fucking maybe an average Joe, I probably wouldn't, I, it probably wouldn't be fair. But I feel like I'm fucking King Kong. Then I'm, you'd have to hide it. I'm fucking King Kong. <laughs> I mean, Andrew Tate explains it well. It's status. Yeah. Status. So you, you know, I got status, so I can fucking. But I don't know. It's like, like I said, in, in camp, it's not. That's not a thing. After after camp, it's you know, Danny's never fine with it. I mean, she has been. She's gone through phases. But then we have a baby, and then her hormones change, and then it's like this and that. It is not wrong to say that Sean O'Malley is not just a force to be reckoned with in the octagon, but he's also navigating his unique journey when it comes to his personal life. Bray Wyatt. Wyndham Rotunda, WWE icon, dies at 36. In the world of combat sports, it's a real mix of emotions that hit the fan community hard. Yesterday was one of those tough days because Bray Wyatt, or Wyndham Rotunda as he's known outside the ring, has died at the age of 36. Paul Triple H Levesque, a major figure in the WWE, was the one to share the news. You know, it's moments like these that remind us of the impact these wrestlers have had on fans all around the world. So hearing about his passing is a real shocker. Just received a call from WWE Hall of Famer Mike Rotunda, who informed us of the tragic news that our WWE family member for life, Wyndham Rotunda, also known as Bray Wyatt, unexpectedly passed earlier today, Levesque wrote. Our thoughts are with his family, and we ask that everyone respect their privacy at this time. However, Wrestling reporter Sean Ross Sapp dropped the news that Bray Wyatt had been away from WWE because of a COVID-19 diagnosis, which triggered some heart issues. 
He was actually in the process of gearing up for a wrestling comeback before this tragic event unfolded, and now his cause of death was a heart attack. From Bray Wyatt to Husky Harris and that unforgettable character, The Fiend, Rotunda's personas were in a league of their own. The whole wrestling community is just in shock to hear this tragic news. So now, it's a moment for the wrestling community to come together, share memories, and honor the legacy of Bray Wyatt. Guys, we'd love your support if you're enjoying the video. Just hit that subscribe button to motivate us to bring you more exciting content. Ian Machado Gary intended to prolong the 15-minute beating of Neil Magny. Once again, Gary is making waves in the welterweight division, and he's maintaining a pristine record of 13-0. Interestingly, this 25-year-old guy has potential written all over him. His dominant unanimous decision win over Magny didn't just give him the win, it also pushed him up to the 11th spot in the divisional rankings. Talk about climbing the ladder. The funny thing is, Gary wasn't initially set to fight Magny in this recent bout. It all got personal real quick when Magny stepped in to replace their fellow top 15 fighter, Jeff Neal, and at this moment, an unexpected turn brought out the drama. I didn't want to hurt him. I wanted him to feel what the other side of justice feels like, Gary said. The words that that man uttered at the UFC media day were effing ridiculous, and he should be ashamed of ever muttering the words of raising a hand to a kid or bragging about raising a hand to a kid. When I got to the desk and someone asked me about him, I could not, as a man, as a person, not speak about what he said. I just had a child, so I am a protector for life. I have to protect and grow this little being that I created to grow into a man and help him along the way. I had been saying eight minutes it was the next day that I said I would drag this out for 15 minutes, Gary concluded. Neil went home on a pair of crutches or a wheelchair. He's going home and he's thinking about his leg and how much pain it's in. I hope that man sits down and thinks about the mistakes. All the respect was lost for that man after he bragged about beating a kid. The real story of that fight was Gary's impressive kicking game. Man, those kicks did a number on Magny's movement right from the get-go. And can we talk about the result here? Gary managed to pull off his fifth decision victory in his career. That's some impressive consistency. It's been seven years since we saw a domination in the octagon like I did on Saturday night, Gary said. People talk about the finish, but I went out there and had so much fun beating him up. I put on a show for the fans. The finish is always something we look for. But if someone wants to be too tough for their good, I have no problem dragging it out longer. It's just wild how these things play out in the octagon. Gary's got an exciting journey ahead, that's for sure. Who knows how far he'll go in the world of MMA? Ngano expects Tyson Fury fight to build excitement for his clash with John Jones. In the journey of hope and suffering, Francis Ngannou is holding a seat of hope for a super fight with John Jones. And yes, it's one of those matchups that fans have been buzzing about for a while now, but Ngannou has got some other interesting things on his plate. So mark your calendars for October 28th because that's when Nanganu is finally stepping into the squared circle. And guess who's waiting for him there? None other than Tyson Fury. Recently, Nyanu dropped some hints during his appearance on Mike Tyson's Hot Boxing podcast. I'm disappointed too, but that fight, again, that fight is still possible. You know, I think uh, we both are down for it. Um, I left the USA, but that doesn't mean that this fight can cannot happen. And you will just make that fight bigger. Though. Yes. Like imagine like uh, jo uh, me and John John fighting like after the Tyson Fury fight, exactly. the one or the second one, mm -hmm. you just get that fight bigger and bigger, you know? Exactly. So that fight will always be there when both of us, we want to fight. Okay. Now it's, matter, it's a matter of like uh, our contractual situation. Now you've hit the nail on the head there. The whole Jones versus Nunganu matchup has one giant hurdle in its way, and that's the sticky issue of their contracts. It's all about business dynamics, you know? And when we're talking about big bucks and massive stakes, things can get pretty unpredictable. Money has a way of making even the most unlikely scenarios come true, so who knows? Maybe somewhere down the line, the PFL and the UFC could somehow find common ground. It's a long shot, but in the world of sports, you can never say never. All right, guys, that's all for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. See you at the next one. Until then, goodbye.